But any church that is really focusing on young people right now is seeing massive growth. We're seeing that right here at right. Highlands. Young people, when we go after them right now, they are looking for truth. And when they find it, there's so much fake news out there. When they find truth, what you get, and when you activate that, what you get are the most passionate people in the entire church who are gonna worship harder, they're leaning in, taking notes, and they're they're serving, even right now, all yeah. around our church. And, and they're bringing their parents with them. Yes. The craziest thing is to watch a, a 14, 15 year old get fired up about Jesus, and they're the ones that are now recruiting their whole, whole family yeah. to be in church. And the parents are like, I don't know what you guys are doing, but my child's listening to me. They're, they're trying their best to honor me. I, I see the fruit in their life, and it changes the entire family dynamic. Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to the Grow Leader Podcast, where we grow leaders that grow churches by helping them reach their full potential. We're so glad to have you here today. If you're new to us, my name is Matt, sitting alongside my pastor, Pastor Chris Hodges, and uh, I'm excited about this time of year. You were telling me before we started just now, this is a significant episode today. Yeah, uh, for me, this is the completion of three years of having a podcast, so... Which is, which is crazy. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, we thought we'd just do one a month, and then we added the mid-month podcast episodes. And so I don't know how many... You probably know the total of how many there actually I, I would know that. We'll put that in the show notes. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to say another. But we the, the mid-month episode started out as a bonus. Right. And then we were like, we like these so much, let's keep doing them. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. It's given us another avenue to be able to communicate some of the... Congratulations. Yeah, thank on, you. On, on three great seasons. Yeah, it's I appreciate that. Fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Excited about our guest today. We, we, know, we know him super, super, super well. I'll let you introduce him, and uh, we're going we're gonna to have a ton of fun today. Yeah, normally on the on the main podcast at the first of the month, uh, it's just you and me right. talking about leadership principles and growth principles and church principles, And um, but we're right in the middle of our month where we've just finished a Summer Blast kids event, a three-day, our version of Vacation Bible School, and now we're all gearing toward our student event at the end of July. And I was just thinking as I was preparing for this podcast how critically important it is to the health and the growth of a local church to be very tuned in to children's ministry and student ministry. And um, and today, he's not really a guest. He's been on my team forever yeah. um, and has led our student ministry forever and now leads our college. Uh, he's the founder. He was the one that created basically the Motion Conference, which may be one of the largest uh, if not the largest student conference in the entire nation. I think he's the best youth pastor, college president yep. in America. How about all of that? And uh, and it's kind of fun for me because I'm sitting here next to both you guys that are in the generation that I've been pouring my life into. So what you're doing for students and for your campus is what I try to do for you. And mm -hmm. this is really... I call it organic discipleship. This is what the local church is supposed to look like. But we have the one and only Mark Pettis in the house today. Well, I, yeah, I am so <laughs> so honored to be here. PC, love you, Matt, love you. Yeah. And just honestly, sit here with you guys is like, I, this is a whole lot of fun. And then that intro, PC, um, just honored to be part of your team. Still can't believe God chose me to be a part tell, of this. Tell them how you ended up uh, in Highlands and then on staff and then the journey of the different things that you've led. Yeah. I think it'll help them because we really do want to talk about student ministry. Ministry. You're you're you've been one of the best thinkers on my team since you. I mean, seriously, you're you're very well read. You're you're very intellectual and spiritual. It's a beautiful combination. But brother, you you've added so much value uh, to who we are as a church uh, and now as a college. But tell them your story a little bit so they kind of have the context of it all. Yeah, and, and still can't believe I'm a part of any of this. But but we're going to talk about student ministry today. Uh, I was a college student. So my wife now, uh, Jill, now wife, was girlfriend then. We were college students at UAB, and we got invited one night. We were, we were lo we in love with Jesus, and had I had big dreams for ministry, didn't know how all that was going to work. Got invited by some friends over to Birmingham Southern, and uh, and there was a speaker there that night. It was Chris Hodges. He just planted a church, which I didn't even know you could plant a church. <laughs> I grew up in the South, so I thought they were just yeah. always there. You start, a, you start a town, you start a church. And uh, I heard Pastor Chris speak, and it was an amazing night. And you actually, great leadership principal that night, you met all of us. We were a big crew, probably 12 of us. And he said, hey, come on Sunday to church and be a part of the team. And I'm like, I just got recruited. And so we went on that next Sunday. The church was five or six weeks old, and I was blown away. You led worship. Yep. Then you preached. Yep. You were shaking hands in the foyer and remembered us. Us, And so that was the beginning of the journey. And so that was that was 2001. And so go ahead and give them the completion of the story, how you would ultimately— yeah. 
come on the team. Were you in the meeting that I had at, at the fish place? <laughs> yes. With, no, with no, Blake? Rich place. So, so me and a couple of friends, including Blake <laughs> Lindsay, who's now one of our campus pastors. He's, he's, at, he's at our broadcast yeah, location. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. So we, we, again, have big dreams for ministry. We're trying to figure all this out. And so we get a meeting with Pastor Chris. We, we a lunch Literally. meeting. The funniest yeah. part about this meeting, PC, is we wrote the email to you that it, it, it took us at least five or six hours to write this email to ask <laughs> for the lunch. So we get this lunch, all this pressure. We were there to share a vision we had to go plant a church. Um, and I remember we were yeah, sitting at so, that, cor- <laughs> that corner table at Fish Market. Go ahead. Wow. Yeah, so we're there sharing that vision about planting this church. And for us, for whatever reason, it was in Auburn. So we're telling him that. And, and PC listens. He's so gracious. At the and, you know We have this big conviction. We're going to go plant this church. At the end of the of our whole like <laughs> monologue, PC says, well, I'm really praying and thinking about putting a campus down in Auburn. And we said, okay, we'll just come do that with you. <laughs> so, we never ended up in Auburn, but what we did is just, it, we honestly, that day was the day. It was like, we're, we're here at Highlands. We already love it. And, and there's room for us to lead. And so you actually said to us that day, you said, well, I want you to start serving. Um, for, then it was, for us then it was set up. And he said, serve so well that when I hire you, people think you're already on the team. And exactly we, right. We took that as a mandate. That's exactly right. And so, so but, started serving Dream Team, and then a few years later, we're leading small groups as well for students. A few years late, a few years later, a couple years later, you uh, invited us to be the youth pastors, Jill and I, which was an amazing day. It was high school specifically. Within a week, it was also middle school, which was a little bit of a curveball, but I was excited about it. And then from there, Highlands College in 2011. So, it's been an amazing wow. journey. All really though centered around next generation. Right. Right. My uh, my favorite line to give young leaders that wanted to be on staff was "Force me to hire you." Yeah, <laughs> just force me to hire you. Like serve so well, love so well, build build well, and uh, yeah, make make it make sense to everybody who's watching. So, <laughs> and, I, and I think you know we're gonna get into some some nuts and bolts of, of how we're leading students, but from a I mean, I think a massive leadership principle for for any pastor or any leader out there right now is the access that you gave to young leaders, to you. I've heard stories. I, I have a friend at our campus. She was a Starbucks manager uh, in Birmingham at a location that she said, I saw Pastor Chris six hours, right. seven hours a day, sit yeah. at a table, and it was just a revolving door of meeting with a, a ton of young leaders yeah. and, and, and casting vision in their lives. I mean, you, you that's, well, that's what Well, I was going to say, without now. a doubt, I would be somewhere else right now, if not for the, even those two conversations I mentioned, come be a part of the team. Yeah. And then even, you know, now a year later, start serving, specifically giving us, you know, opportunity. And honestly, I I, wanted, I was a young leader looking to be recruited. I didn't right. know how to take a next step. And he stepped in and gave us that access. Which is great, great. We weren't intending to talk about right. this, but this is a great thing for the pastors and the leaders that are listening. Again, I call it organic discipleship. We, we, we tend to lean on classes and growth tracks and systems. And you would think I would be the guy that would lean on that. I didn't. We created those systems and those classes to help us facilitate something we were already doing organically. And that is saying yes to emails and showing up at fish market and having a revolving door at the Starbucks and just listening to people. And I always did the same thing, by the way, as you said, I always let them talk first. And I let, I wanted to hear their vision what do you see for your life? And then I was always thinking while they're telling that story, where do I fit into this story? Like, can I encourage you? Can I help you plant that church? Or, hey, should you really take that vision to plant that church and come help build this one with me? Maybe God stirred all that for this purpose. And and I was just fishing, really, uh, for a place to get in someone's life. And I would encourage every leader that's listening. I mean, there's just no, there's no substitute for time, uh, the table, conversation, dreams, uh, giving them projects, giving them tasks and things like that. And so. I just think you can't overstate the access piece. If you want to grow the next generation of leaders, you got to give them access into your life. Yeah, and you never grow out of that. I can say to, to everyone who's listening today, you're still doing that. Both of us. Yep. I, I get to yeah, see yeah. We just came out of an hour-long yeah. meeting, yeah. 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 So. Literally, so I think, I think those systems are there to help support it, but it has to be a culture that you embody. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about student ministry. I, again, as I said in the opener, I really believe that one of the greatest ways to build a healthy, thriving, New Testament, life-giving, growing church is to have very intentional and uh, robust uh, children's ministry and student ministry. We'll leave children's ministry for another day, but let's talk about our student ministry philosophy, Mark. I mean, we have a very clear philosophy that's evolved over time of how we have both leadership development and small groups and big events and evangelism, conferences. In your mind, 
because I think you have a great understanding of what's going on in the student world. Of course, you have your hands on, uh, you know, the the what's happening in the minds of, of college students right now. Give us an overview. Give us an overarching. Here's where they are. Here's what they need. Yeah, I think one of the things you've always done so well, even as the stories from you being a youth pastor, were, were giving students that opportunity to really do something more than just attend, to activate people. It's next steps. It's what you do for all of us uh, church-wide. But letting that be something that is, is all the way into those, even kids' years. And I think a lot of churches you know, say, hey, attend, attend your youth group, and one day when you become an adult, you can be a participant. And I'm so grateful for that Psalm 93 mm-hmm. planted in the house, Psalm 92 planted in the house. Um, mentality. And I think we've, we've built that different systems, different programs around that, but we've kept that pure heart um, through all these years. And right now, uh, I've talked to a lot of church leaders even recently. I think all of us are concerned with Gen Z and Gen Alpha and what we're, what we're seeing in the world. I think we need to be more intentional than ever before. Mm-hmm. Uh, reading a book right now I was sharing with you called Anxious, The Anxious Generation. And it's been an incredible read for me. Um, number one, it's just given me such a deep compassion. We see a lot of the, what, the behaviors of this generation that can be frustrating at times but a compassion and empathy for the, the way they've grown up in a, the first digital generation yeah. and how depression is up and suicide is up. And a lot of that PC is tied to literally, you can see the dateline of the invention of the smartphone and when it was really mm. adopted by, uh, which is around 2014, 15, adopted by the majority of young people. And, there's, and, and, and then what they've discovered is that one of the biggest hits that a young person takes when they're on that, that device for hours every day is in their spiritual life. It's almost a direct attack on their spiritual life. Wow. So I just think churches have to be more strategic than ever before in creating those programs and energy. Um, the cool thing is this, in the middle of all of that, uh, those look like terrible statistics, but any church that is really focusing on young people right now is seeing massive growth. We're seeing that right here at right. Highlands. Young people, when we go after them right now, they are looking for truth. And when they find it, there's so much fake news out there. When they find truth, what you get, and when you activate that, what you get are the most passionate people in the entire church who are going to worship harder. They're leaning in, taking notes, and they're they're serving, even right now, all yeah. around our church. And, and they're bringing their parents with them. Yes. The craziest thing is to watch a, a 14, 15-year-old get fired up about Jesus, and they're the ones that are now recruiting their whole, whole family yeah. to be in church. And the parents are like, I don't know what you guys are doing, but my child's listening to me. They're They're trying their best to honor me. I, I see the fruit in their life, and it changes the entire family dynamic. So let's talk about what we're doing, because I think um, I think if you're going to have a great youth ministry or student ministry, we used to call it youth ministry. Sorry about that. No, that, I, I, that dates me I right there. It's back. Actually, it's right. <laughs> is it really back? Yeah, okay, yeah. good. Um, but in in student ministry is is I think it needs to be comprehensive, and it and it because I think there's this need for the kind of the let me say it this way kind of the crowd sized event because they like the energy yep. of you know, a thousand kids in the room and the worship, you know, of course, worship's always, you know, different and in many ways better when there's just this big crowd of energy and it's easier to evangelize perhaps uh, in those bigger environments, you know, because your friend can come to something, my goodness, look at how many students are here. So for years, we've had what we call this motion night experience, which is more crowd size, energy, evangelism, good speakers, things like that. But then the polar opposite of that, of having what we call motion night. So we have we have, we have motion night and motion midweek, where now you're, it's more the kind of the youth group we grew up in, yeah. where it's guitars in a circle on the floor, you know, and Bible study and conversation, and and so we've kind of adopted both these models of, man, we think there's this need for this. Hey, let's have a, a well done service and where they can invite their friends there's energy and size and 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 then this this individual hey i know your name um i i, I can go to your high school watch you play football i can attend um as, as a youth pastor because we have student pastors at every campus i love the combination of that yeah. and then in the middle of that the two things that our whole church does, and that is small groups yep. and dream team. Yep. So they're still, even in the motion midweek, that's just their campus. So it's a smaller size, more intimate. They're still in, in a small group outside of that. And then also being developed as leader. Is that the right way to do it? I mean, like that, I just love the thought of this comprehensive fits all these different areas instead of just doing one of those. I do think it is the right way, and I think we've we've looked at different programming and even different names throughout the years. But I think you have to have that combination. And I would even say to add, to add one to that is is the Sunday morning expression still yeah. the biggest 
yep. youth event we do every you know every month yeah. is every week at church. They love you. They love being a part of the church. They're worshiping there. We we do meet some families who have students for the first time there. But as you mentioned, that motion night is so important because it is evangelistic. It's a great safe place for someone to get invited. And I think the size helps with that. If it was all big, it wouldn't be good. Right. But having that once a, once a month night where I can come in, and if I want to be anonymous as a young person, I can, but we get them into God's presence. Right. And I think that's what's important. And the speakers you mentioned, the worship environment, they experience God. In fact, my kids right now have a friend they're reaching, reaching out to that is completely lost. They invited him to motion night, and he is he still has not made that decision, but he now he's coming back because he's experienced something. That's so good. And that's a perfect example. And he would have said he's an atheist, you know, six months ago, yeah. and now he's on a spiritual journey, which is huge. But the motion midweek without that PC, none of it works. And that's where the discipleship is not what is taught, it's what is caught. Right. It is having a youth pastor in your life who knows your name, who's consistently with you each, you know, each month. And also in our in our system, that's the one who's at the football games. They're there supporting students. They're known, remembered, and really, and I know you're experiencing that as well in your yeah. own kids. It's it's powerful. So we're getting that combination of the big, the small, and it's all very intentional. So good. And one of the things, too, that I think is important is to tell the congregation or tell the parents what you're doing for their kids. Yeah. So one of the things that we've become very intentional about is not just doing all of this, but I celebrate it and talk to the parents and saying, hey, we're doing everything we can to serve your kids, and here are the different things we are providing and why, and I think that's I think that's pretty important too. Yep. And if any of the church leaders or pastors or student directors that are listening to us from other churches, you're welcome to come to the first, I'm sorry, the second Wednesday of the month, which is our motion night, our big gathering, or come to one of the motion midweeks at one of our locations, like, yeah, and, like and we'll, at one of your campuses. And we'll have all, all everything we do, what we'll make sure, it's on the resource site, so we'll make sure we link that uh, in the show notes as well. But I, I think too, just, you know, having a singular vision of the church. And so what we're trying to get the third grader to experience is the same as the 60 year old. We want every single person to know God, find freedom, discover purpose, make a difference. And our students get a chance to start doing that in the sixth grade. They can come through the growth track and be on the JV dream team. There, there is this it's huge, there's no, a singular culture, singular vocabulary yeah. that they hear all across the church. Because ultimately getting them planted in the house, the church is the vehicle that will be with them from, from the time they're six yeah. months to they're, they're so 90 good. years old. And finding different flavor. Our kids' ministry has its own unique mm-hmm. set of systems and f- flavor, if you will. Same thing with student ministry. And I think that's, that. going back to even what you mentioned, PC, your support of it, the fact you are the one that's vocalizing that, the fact they're hearing, parents are hearing the importance of it, but students are also hearing that, that their senior pastor loves them, believes in them. In fact, you did a message a couple years ago that still resonates with how we believe in this generation. Yeah, and it's student- called Fighting for, those who want to listen to it, go uh, a couple years ago, maybe. Yeah, we'll, link, we'll link it. Fight. Yeah. Fighting for a generation. Yeah, pa- powerful, honestly. And we did this, we, yeah, we did the survey where we, we asked kids in our church, what do you want your parents to yep. know? And I read the responses and Powerful. there were tears. Yeah. It, it was it was it was something. And uh and that's when I discovered Mark, and I want you to speak to this a little bit. You could too, because you're a parent and you're you're you guys are actually have the kids in the age groups that we're talking we, about we right now. We're customers. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> yes. We're grateful. We're, we're very thankful for yeah. our church. Yeah. yeah, and one of the things that I discovered, I mean, I think loneliness has always been an issue. It was an issue when I was a teenager because you because you want to be accepted and liked so much. But I think all of that got so heightened uh, coming out of the pandemic whenever yeah. we intentionally, I hated the phrasing when they said it, social distancing. What we did need, by the way, was physical distancing, and we needed more social connection than ever before. We are socially disconnected. We have social media that's not social. It's, it's, yeah. it is, it's, it's sterile, if anything, right? And so now we have this generation that knows their phone more than they know any other person, and they do feel lonely. And, and I think there's something to be said about having a, a church culture and a church, church programming that is so intentional about I know you and to be able to tell the parents man we we know your kids we're we're the, their student director and pastor is the one the phone number they're calling at 10 o'clock at night when they're discouraged you know just to have i had that and i was that when i was a youth pastor i had I mean, my phone rang off the hook at 11 o'clock at night i'm tempted i'm scared i'm, I'm not ready for my test tomorrow to have that level of intimate support that parents and families need Talk to us about just kind of both of you guys about where our students are right now. And what I want to do is I want to stir inside of all of us to be not just putting together a system or a program to make our churches better, 
But like, what do we really need to do to meet the needs of our kids right now? Where, what are their needs? And what do we need to do to meet those needs? Yeah, I th- and I'd love you to jump in as well. I, I, think, I think every generation uh, needs a cause to believe in. And I think this generation, all of that social media, all of that phone, PC, it's such a self-focused world we're living in. And all of the, the, that technology has pushed students deeper into that. And I think, I think the, 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 the personal journey every student's going through, they need a pastor. And more, I know this more than ever as a parent. I'm thankful that I, and for mm-hmm. my kids, I'm their parent, but they have pastors in their life who they're able to work, work out the, the situations of life with. I think all of those things are important when they're walking through friend situations, that social connectivity. And the myth would be that you can't scale that, and we're, we're proof yeah. that you can. Even at a very large church, mm-hmm. you can have those personal connections, and students desperately need that in all of our environments. But I think that calls for them to believe in that we're connecting you to something. You've always said this, PC, that it's not about defense, it's about offense. Right. And you know, I think back in the day, it was you said for radicals only about your youth ministry, but what you were really doing, going on mission trips to smuggle Bibles, or we just got back from a mission trip to Japan, what we're really saying to students is, you can be a part of something so much bigger. And when they get a picture of that, parents, I'm telling you, leaders, I'm telling you, it pulls them out of that self-focus to something larger. And I think for us, that is one of the most incredible things. I'm grateful. That's who God is. He's a God who gives us purpose and calling. And as students get connected to that, I've seen that in my own kids' lives. It activates something that, that really then becomes, in their own heart, they're recognizing, okay, there's something better than the world has to offer. And there's, right. a, there's a consistency in the vision. I think that I can remember, I, mean, I remember going to church as a sixth or seventh grader, and I can remember who preached at me. And I can remember who actually said, hey, man, God's got so much more than you're experiencing right now and like called me to a higher standard and just that consistency all the time. Um, Pastor Lane is actually my, my seventh graders, eighth graders, uh, small group leader, which is crazy that Lane Trance <laughs> is, is my child's small group leader. But I, I think that's actually one of the points is the entire ministerial staff of your church bought into students. <laughs> that's right. Like we, we're. We're we're all serving Summer Blast, which is our kids' ministry. We're all we're all bought into the next generation. We're all we're all going to be at Motion Conference. We're all going to yeah. be at Motion Conference. Yeah. Like the whole the whole pastoral ministerial staff of the church is bought into the next generation, and and I think that says something. And so now that you know our kids are seeing different people, even on staff, are going. I mean, they really believe in us. They really lean into us and, and want to help us. Yeah. So I want to talk about one more concept that I it may have been the greatest discovery I ever had as a youth pastor. And you said it, but I want to make sure those that are listening heard it. And that is, we went on offense instead of always on defense. Huge. Instead of just always saying, oh, don't do this, and oh, try not to do that, and oh, I'm so sorry that happened. If, if we could flip it around to what God has for your life. And it, I, I noticed how going on missions trips or giving them responsibility to lead something on a Sunday to, I mean, Lane Schrantz, who you're referring to, for those who don't know who he is, he was the first employee of Church of the Highlands, has been here since day one, has led you know, on, on, my, on our leadership team for 23 years now. When he was 17 years old, I made him my bus pastor. Right. <laughs> and what I was doing, yeah, he, j- he had just joined our youth group and I was just like, I needed to give him a job. And I, and, I, and I need somebody to help me, like make sure they were behaving. Somebody themselves. just wrote down, man. I need a bus pass. <laughs> yeah, well, you got. Well, you you really don't because you, 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 you don't want the buses that come with it. But anyway, but back then you didn't have a proper youth ministry unless you were right. you're picking up kids, you know, yeah. all around the city on these giant school buses. We I think we ended up with three or four of them awesome. going all across the city. But anyway, but I, I always believe though, if you can give them something to do, they got distracted. Sin was no more, no longer appealing. Uh, what the world had to offer was no longer appealing. We did it primarily through missions trips and just focusing them on uh, things like that, but which we still do. But I learned that uh, I, I phrase it now as just leadership development. You're not, you're not, you're not the next generation. You're the now generation. Yeah. I Man, get on a camera now. If you can run it, if you're 17 years yeah. old and you can run it now, run it now. You don't have to wait. We'll, mm-hmm. And we even built a culture here at Church of the Highlands of. Hey, if you're older, move out of the way and let somebody younger yeah. have a chance. Uh, let them hold that mic and sing on stage and and lead in those places. And we teach. I I, I wrote this down so everybody could have it. We we intentionally teach seven topics of, in our youth ministries: authentic faith, spiritual priorities, moral boundaries, meaningful friendships, wise choices, others first, and God given authority. We're we're intentional about what we're teaching them and. And help you know discipling them in, but I'm telling you, the greatest 
um, way to develop someone is to, is is to not just sit at the table and talk like we did at the fish market, but yep. also say, hey, why don't you come help this Sunday yep. and be on the team, get people in leadership development. Well, I think the organic side, I was going to tell tell you a story. I was talking to a, a guy named Jeremy, who you know super well, who was around when the church first started the other yep. day. And he was telling me about, he was like, man, there was this really significant prayer I prayed in my life. And, you know, and PC kind of led me through that. And I asked, I told you the story the other day. I said, hey, what, you know, what, what event was this at? Was it at a conference? And he said, it was on his back porch eating cheeseburgers. Like it was just, and, and I think that for the senior pastor out there, good. You, you don't always get a chance to do that now as much as you would I want do to. do it more than people know though do. still, yeah. But you always show up, whether it's at motion conference or a motion night or our college ministry, you're speaking to college students. Our kids know that you're there. And I think senior leadership being a part of like any touch point you get to be with the next generation that's how you bring them in. And the, oh, that's my pastor too. That's yeah. not just my kid's pastor, my student pastor. The pastor is my pastor. It makes, makes such, a big, such a big difference. And again, and, and what I did with Jeremy is I said, hey, come jump on the team. I, the point I really want to drive in is that uh, is the power of a project, power of, of be, be a partner. Don't be in the stands watching church. Come, come, come yeah. build church with me, right? Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, I, was, I just want to really hone in on that because I think back to kind of the condition of the, of the world that we're in, there is such a focus on self and there's such a draw to selfishness. And as church leaders and as parents, if we don't do what you're saying right now, we're missing an opportunity. The devil always overplays his hands. That in, in, intense self focus actually makes an environment where people are calling you to something bigger, super attractive. And this turns all that around because now you're focused on, on others. So I'm going to end there. I want to talk, talk a little bit, a few minutes about uh, something that I'm very stirred about, and you know this, Mark, um, and that is, is that we're going to be in trouble if we don't do this. Yes. Because we're, we're not raising up leaders, church, I'm talking about church leaders both at, um, as um, those that would be involved in church at the volunteer level, and those that would be do it do it vocationally, we're not raising them up at the rate that is needed for the church to be sustained and healthy, much less grow in the years to come. I'm concerned about the fact that there is a diminishing number of church leaders, which is you know so important to do uh, this at this organic level, just with all of our students, but also to to every church ought to be identifying. That's right. Students in their church that have calls of God Absolutely. on their life. Uh, what's we, we, we're not even giving altar calls for ministry anymore. I mean, I I grew up. It was a once a month occurrence. If you feel called to the ministry, come you know come to the altar, surrender your life to Jesus. We're not even calling kids to a life of of service to God, and I'm very concerned. It's why we have a Highlands College. It's why we need a hundred more like it to meet the need of the leadership shortage that I'm convinced is going to be there in about 15 to 20 years if we don't do something about it. Speak of, uh, speak to it, Mark. I heard you years ago, 2011, you and I were on a trip, and I'd read Luke 10 too, and I had, had studied it somewhat. I'll never forget you telling me this is the problem. Like right now, if we, it's, it, there is a leadership shortage, and even back then, you were seeing it on the way, and if we don't solve this, I mean, that's the prayer of Jesus is labors for that harvest field. And so absolutely, PC, and I think, you know, Highlands College is very exciting. We do need 100 more like it. But I know this, everywhere I travel, just got back from Japan, yeah. the leader with tears in his eyes of a, of a church um, that, that, that coming out of COVID has huge potential for growth in Japan and all over Asia. He was saying resource is not our issue. Vision is not our issue. If we- Opportunity is not our issue. Opportunity. Literally, even in a place that's been somewhat closed off in, in the Japanese culture, if I just, with tears in his eyes at a Starbucks, if I just had more leaders. And we're seeing that, you know, at that level, but also we need more leaders in our, in our, in our schools right now, young leaders who are called, which yes. is why PC, this our largest summer ever of our summer internship here at Highlands for high schoolers. You don't have to have a college. So stop there. Yeah. We have a summer internship. During the summer. So these aren't high, <laughs> yeah, college right. students? No. These are, these are kids who took their time off of summer, and instead served as interns in what we call 252. Yeah, 252, after Luke 252, and we literally have hundreds. We kicked off the summer a few weeks ago. They're serving at every campus. They're getting poured into by Highlands College and other leaders, adult leaders in our church, calling into a higher standard to then go back this fall and be leaders in their school. And we obviously need more leaders in, in our businesses. In every, in every space, it's, it's like, there's so, such a lack of leadership 
anyone who walks in with a leadership calling and some confidence and anointing on their life is immediately able to make a massive difference. And so that has to be the focus of Yeah, so I want to close by saying this to the pastors that are listening, and that is God does the calling, right? So God's going to speak to their hearts, but we have to be this voice and this opportunity uh, for that to happen. So in other words, create space and environments, altar times, prayer times, where I wonder if there might be anyone here today. Every time I speak at one of our college ministry uh, nights, I say, you know, many of you, all of you are going to go serve God the rest of your life, but some of you are called yeah. to give your life fully to God in full-time service to God. And I'm just, <laughs> I'm just concerned that if we don't all do this, again, we're going to find ourselves in about 15 years without enough leaders uh, for the harvest field that is in front of us. Not even for the one that's coming, the one that just to sustain what we currently have. And I truly believe we're stepping into a revival generation. So, I want to repeat something you say to us all the time. The right way is the way that works. 100%. You, you tell us this all the time. The right way is the way that works. And so for all the church leaders out there, if it's not working, uh, it might not be the right way. And so it's a great chance to do what we do all the time, which you always ask us, hey, what one thing in student ministry, if we changed it, would make the biggest difference and help us reach more students. I think it's a great staff conversation. I think it's a great chance to it's pull great. some people together. I think as parents, I know we have some moms and dads that are listening as a couple to go, hey, what one thing if we changed it would help us uh, get our, our kids more in love with Jesus and, and realizing the vision that, that God has for their lives um, as well. I, I don't want to leave without talking about the college. because I know, I know we're Yeah, gonna I would just say, could, please come visit. Come, come just uh, take a look at it. Leaders, parents, uh, business leaders, students that are listening right now, just come see it and see if God speaks to you or you may know someone who would want to be involved in Highlands College. You can go, of course, check it out at highlandscollege.edu uh, on the internet. And um, But just come check it out. I would just love for people to come see uh, what we're doing here to train up the next generation of church leaders. And if you're a pastor out there and you're thinking, hey, we actually have a need for a particular position, worship, production, kids, how do they connect with us? Yeah, same website. There's a portal there actually for uh, both posting positions and hiring positions that we, our team would love to come alongside any pastor. Um, that is our entire focus. Pastor Chris is from day one said this is not about students coming here. It's about the students we send. And so getting them out to strategic places around the world is what we live for. So please, any pastor, any leader, let us know how we can serve you. I feel like we have to have uh, Pastor Mark on more. President Mark Pettis. Anytime, uh, anytime. On, on the podcast. Hanging out um, with you guys, this is a dream come true. So. It's awesome. Lo love you being here today. Yeah. Love you and grateful for you. Grateful for your impact in my kids' lives. Really grateful for you, uh, how you lead our students. Hey, we're, we're going to wrap it up here on the Grow Leader Podcast. Exciting time of year. If you're headed to Birmingham for the Grow Leader Conference, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Make sure while you're here to come see Highlands College. You need to see it while you're in town. If you can't get here, that's okay. This fall, we're coming to Denver, Cleveland, and also Miami. Come on, you need a conference trip in Miami. You need, in Miami. <laughs> it's got to be amazing. We'll see you out there and we'll have all that information on growleader.com. Have the best week. We'll see you next time. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. And we also want to say a big thank you to all of our partners that help make the Grow Leader podcast happen each and every month. For over 80 years, the Western Investment Foundation has helped churches with their borrowing and their investing needs. Whether you're dreaming of a new opportunity or seeking wise counsel about resource management, WIF can assist you. You can learn more about them at wifonline.com slash grow leader. Next is our newest partner, Studio C. Studio C can help you know your people and grow your church. They combine strategy, technology, and communications to maximize church member engagement. You can bridge the engagement gap and transform your church's impact with Studio C. Learn more about them at their website. It's thestudioc.org slash growleader.